Good morning, everyone. My name is Zhuang Nong Huang. I'm currently a research associate at the University of Manitoba. My research is mainly focusing on black leg host pathogen interactions and black leg management. Today, it's my great pleasure to share with you a story of managing black leg and free beetle in Clora. And the title of my talk is Does one plus one always equal two? What's happening when better free beetle control meets new fungicide seed treatment or control of black leg in Clora? As you all know, wheat, barley, canola, corn, soybean, and other major crops are important for Canadian agriculture. And comparing to wheat, corn, soybean, and other major crops on the prairies, canola has been contributing over a quarter of annual Canadian farm revenue for many years. And that's about 10 billion Canadian dollars per year. However, there are many agronomy challenges that Canadian canola growers are facing, including abiotic stresses such as the heat and drought we have experienced this year in Western Canada, as well as major disease and insects, such as the devastating black leg, club root, vorticidium stripe, sclerotinia, stem rot, and flea beetles. When you walk into a canola field, it is possible for you to see this. When there's enough black leg inoculum and flea beetle populations, that black leg and flea beetles are causing damages simultaneously, especially at the seeding stage. And that's why black leg and flea beetle management are so important and sometimes could be very challenging as well. As you are familiar, many caused by the Pertosferia maculans, black leg can infect many canola tissues, including cotyledons, young leaves, and other tissues, and it causes stem cankers, plant lodging, and in extreme cases, plant fatality. Luckily, we have several tools in managing black leg, including crop rotations, growing black leg resistant varieties, our gene rotation, which has been covered by Dr. Ferrando, and the newly introduced fungicide seed treatment. Keep in mind that the critical timing is early season from May to June, when the spores are causing primary infections on canola cotyledons in young leaves. With regard to seed treatment, I'm sure our next speaker, Justin Cornelison, will have more to cover. So uh, this is a case study of introducing fluoroprime, one of the succinate dehydrogenase inhibitor fungicide to uh, black leg control. The two figures on the left were assessed at the seeding stage and the figure on the right was assessed as earlier maturity stage. As you can see, lesion size, black leg severity and disease severity index or DSI in both the susceptible and resistant varieties were significantly reduced by fluor prime seed treatment under free conditions set at Brandon and Mayerford. I do want to stress that these findings were obtained when the inoculum was directly applied on the fresh pricked wounds. On the other hand, we also know that the overwintering flea beetles, the phyllotrita species, were emerged and feed on different canola tissues, including cotyledons, leaves, stems, and seed pores. And similar to black deck, flea beetles can cause severe damages and, in extreme cases, plant fertility. Although there are other choices, such as biocontrol, cultural practice and using host plant resistance, the major tool for free beetle control is chemical application by using insecticide seed treatment and foliar spray. Keep in mind that similar to black deck, the critical timing is early season from May to June when the first, first wave of free beetle feed on the newly emerged canola seedlings. And in the worst scenarios, free beetle can wipe out the canola seedlings entirely. As you know, Christopher and Stripe 
free beetles are commonly seen on the prairies, and when they feed, they create wounding injuries at the surfaces. And the feeding damage can be assessed by estimating area loss on cotyledons and leaves. For example, the feeding damage can be ranging anywhere from 0%, 10%, 20%, 50%, and so on. And as damage continues, they can cause leaf defoliation and as well as plant fertility when there is a dense population of libidos. As recommended by Canola Council of Canada, the normal economic threshold to apply insecticide spray is when you see a 25% leaf area losses. So the next question we ask is if there's a link between the presence or absence of wounding and a prolonged wounding age in relation to black lead infections. So we set up a small greenhouse trial looking at the wounding effect on Westa and 7444B adult. And the results were quite interesting that when there is no wounding or when the wound is older than eight hours, black lead infection was significantly reduced on cotyledons. For example, cotyledons inoculate at eight 12, 24 hours post wounding would result in lower infections. The wounding effect is similar on both Vesta and 7444 BL. So this proved that it was required to have wounds allowing pycnidia spores to cause infections on cotyledons. And there's indeed a negative correlation between wounding age and the black lead infections. Therefore, uh, we hypothesized that early insecticide spray and new fungicide seed treatment may alleviate black lead infections. In other words, if we imagine that free beetles are opening the doors for L. maculin spores to get into canola plants, are we expecting to see more black lead infections? To test this, we set up a four year field trials. In 2018, as a prep trial, Westar were planted at all locations. To create a natural inoculum of L. maculans, as well as to captivate an overwinter population of libidos. And this was a snapshot of Knorla stubble footprints taken from Carmen in 2018. Starting from 2019 to 2021, we carry out actual trials with six treatments to see what would happen to black leg infections when early insecticide spray and new fungicide citrine were introduced. To give you a quick overview, our trials were set in three provinces on the prairies, specifically Brandon and Carmen from 2019 to 2021, in 2019 and work review from 2020 to 2021. In our field trials, the susceptible Westa and the resistant variety 7044BL from Bayer Crop Science were used. So we would have the control, the fluoroprime seed treatment, and the weekly distance spray starting at the trace for the feeding damage and here the four leaf stage. Why I say better free beetle control is because the spray took place as early as we saw a trace free beetle damage as shown in the graph and continued the tier 4 leaf stage when plants were fully established. In our seed treatment, the active ingredients Matalaxia and Clostid Needing were used as a base and our trial plot was set at 2 meters by 60 meters and we had four replicates for each treatment using RCBD design at all locations. So uh, we monitored the free beetle fluctuations by assessing the damages at the first true leaf stage. And it, as you can see from left graph, the X axis is the treatment and the Y axis is feeding damage caused by free beetle feeding that early spray is efficient in reducing uh, feeding damage by flibidos, regardless of genotypes and other treatments. We further examine the damages at the fourth leaf stage 
and we can clearly see that the spread plots are clean and free of libido feeding damages as compared to the non-spread plots. So uh, up to now, it is good to see that the efficacy of early thesis spray in reducing libido uh, damages at the seeding stage, while we want to further look into the potential link to black leg infections at the earlier maturity stage, by assessing black leg severity using the standard uh, zero to five scale as shown in the graphs at the bottom, and calculating disease severity index or DSI following the formula here. We also looked at the seed yield from all treatments, as well as seed docket contamination by droplet digital PCR, and the results are still being analyzed. Regarding uh, DDPCR, which will be further addressed by uh, Dr. Penn in session two. So uh, first we look at the disease severity index across all locations from 2019 to 2021. As shown in the graphs on the left, the treatment are at the bottom. And taking Brandon 2019 for, from the top graph, for example, the first three bars are WESTA and the other three bars are 74, 40, or 44 BL. While we did not see significant differences of DSI among treatment within WESTA or 74, 44 BL, and similar trends were obtained from all locations from 2019 to 2021. So uh, quite surprisingly, we found that the efficacy of fluid prime seed treatment is low for black leg when the infection was caused by natural inoculum as compared to that when inoculum was applied directly to fresh wounds. We also found that the differences in flibido damages with early insecticide spray did not actually translate into less black leg infections. However, the efficacy of using genetic resistance for uh, black leg control is consistent. Then uh, let's take a look of, uh, take a look at the seed yield across all locations from 2019 to 2021, as shown in the graphs on the left. And we found the fluid prime seed treatment did not increase seed yield relative to the control. And early insecticide spread did not increase seed yield as well. Although we did see the alleviated flibido damages at seeding stage uh, by early disease spray. However, uh, the benefit of using resistant varieties was clear and that has higher yield than the susceptible variety Vesta at all locations from 2019 to 2021. So uh, what is happening there? And if we look at from her side, we realize that flibido black leg interaction is probably more complicated than it seems. Given the efficacy of fluid prime seed treatment and early disease spray is low in black leg control, there are many questions remain to be unraveled that may be critical for uh, black leg flibido interactions. Here are just a few of our speculations. For example, does fluid prime only protect cartilage against black leg infections? Insecticide spray versus non spray, a few wounds can be sufficient. Does healing of flibido feeding wounds play a role? Environmental conditions and disease pressures? And other unknown factors? So uh, we need further inv investigation, investigations in order to answer these questions. With that, I would like to thank the project lead, Dr. Gary Penn, Dr. Delanza Ferrando, and Dr. Deborah McLaren and all the sports from the teams that helped with field trials at different locations are also highly appreciated. This cannot be done without all of your help. I would like also to thank our funding agencies, Kelowna Council of Canada, Saskanola, Canadian Agricultural Partnership, 
University of Manitoba, Agriculture and Agri-Food Canada, and special thanks to uh, Canadian Phytopathology Society for organizing this workshop. I would also be happy to take any questions that you may have, so we, ha we can have more uh, further discussions. Thank you very much.